For today's Bon Vivant adventure, join us at Restaurant Danielle. Located on Manhattan's Upper East Side, this is Chef Daniel Belude's flagship restaurant that he started back in the 1990s, and he hasn't slowed down since. It currently has two Michelin stars. You be the judge by the end of the video whether you think that's justified. And you might be thinking, 1990s restaurant Upper East Side, this must be old and stuffy. Trust me, it's anything but. They gave us this menu to take home after our experience, and as you'll see here, from the wine pairing to the tasting menu that we experienced, everything was very progressive, hyper-local, a celebration of New York area ingredients combined with French techniques and classic New York City charm. It was an incredible experience that I can't wait to show you. So buckle up, hop aboard, let's go to Danielle. I highly recommend starting your evening with a cocktail here, especially if you need to wait for some wine to decant. Look at the artistry on the peel job of that lime. This tequila mezcal combo tasted like a garden in a glass. It was delicious. Now for a quick outfit check. Here's my wife in a purple cashmere turtleneck with a fur vest and not pictured but a black skirt. More people started to trickle in after our 5 p.m. dinner reservation, which is the earliest you can get at Daniel. Here I am, settled in, in a full suit. They recently removed the jacket requirement for men, but come on guys, look like you're ready to spend $1,000 on dinner. And now for our first course, the upstate New York foie gras terrine with squab. The smaller red parts within the foie gras are the squab. It was juicy and delicious. They paired this course with a rosé from Provence, primarily made from Tiburon grapes, which I had never tried before. It provided for great balance, superb drinkability, and it was a great way to open up our palates. And this, folks, is how the bread is presented. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm some Hungarian wine here. Many who know Hungarian wine and see Tokaj will immediately think sweet and dessert wine, but this version was dry with a wild complexity. This particular ferment is from a renowned Hungarian estate. Hungarian wine was paired with the Alaskan wild king salmon dish. This was my wife's favorite dish of the evening, and the wasabi creme fraiche on top was to die for. Course number three was a winter squash veluti. That's Pennsylvania duck in the middle, and a coconut milk based sauce that really helped balance out the flavors and consistency. It was also paired with a dumpling of sorts. I don't know the technical name for this, but it was on a hot stone plate, which was really cool. You could dunk it in the soup or just enjoy the soup as is. It was really rich and creamy, delicious. The wine pairing here was an impressive Spanish wine that the vineyard calls prodigious. Not only was it that, it was also very unique. Almost with an orange yellowish hue, it was bold with a steely flavor that was able to cut through the rich soup. I could tell from this menu option that the sommelier was having a pretty fun time. It was up there with some of my favorite wines of the evening. Course number four was the Nantucket Bay Scallop served in open ravioli with caviar and a leek vermouth emulsion. Got some caviar right here. <laughs> How's that wine? It's water. Oh, that was water. How's your wine? We stayed in Spain for this wine pairing as well. It also had a yellow hue. It was bold and exotic with a gingery, salty dance on the palate that paired well with the caviar and also had an extremely refreshing finish. Great wine. All right, the sea bass. I've been waiting for this one. This is one of his signatures. Sea bass? Eat it while it's hot. Oh my gosh. Black sea bass is a Danielle Blued staple, and this Montauk black sea bass did not disappoint. Served with bro broccolini, botarga potato croquettes, Buddha hand lemon emulsion, a pine nut gremolata. It was by far my favorite dish of the evening. Paired with the black sea bass was another Daniel Blued staple, a red wine from Burgundy. This classical French red was dry but medium bodied and as my wife noted and appreciated relatively light on the tannins okay dish number six the highland farmed venison this was the dish my wife was the most uncertain about but luckily it had no taste of rabbit whatsoever it was not tough soft juicy 
and the black current dusted quince flaw gras that it was all paired with were immaculate great dish paired with the venison was this northern roan cornish syrah which was big and bold very traditional french syrah dry earthy undertones it really brought out the full flavor of the venison <laughs> How you doing? Everybody's okay over there. Yeah, good. Got a Riesling and some serious fromage. Serious fromage is right. This cheese cart was a real surprise. We weren't expecting it. It wasn't on the tasting menu, but we were able to choose four different options after this cheese expert gave us a full tour of all these different types of cheeses, many of them local to the New York region and some classical French cheeses as well. We chose one French cheese and the other three in the, um, from starting from the upper left to the way to the right were more local to the New York region and everything just kind of blew me away. I can't even remember what we ate, but all I know, it was amazing. Uh, yeah, it sounded good. I mean, I didn't. Somehow they knew it was my birthday, even though neither of us told them. They might have been listening to our conversation, I guess, but regardless, it was a nice, classy touch. And the birthday cake was actually the best dessert. I didn't really get great pictures of the other two, which were the Gifu Sancho Vacherin, which is a blood orange Sancho Sorbet, and the Mont Blanc, which was a chestnut whiskey mousse. I didn't really like either of those, but I'm not a big dessert guy either, so you know, take that with a grain of salt. It just wasn't as up to par as the rest of the tasting menu, in my opinion. The final wine of the evening was a white Bordeaux. It was very complex, aged beautifully from 1999. I may be a wine novice, but I don't drink much wine from 1999 anymore. So that was a real treat and a great way to end the evening and overall experience at Daniel. They gave us some Madeleines and treats to take home with us, so the experience even continued into breakfast the next day. Overall, this place is a dream. It's a great venue to spend a special occasion. I couldn't recommend it more. 10 out of 10.